Hello, this is Mike Lyle, and this is our final video in building a shuriken in Cinema 4D. And uh, what I want to do is tell you, uh, invariably, someone's going to email me or give me a comment on my YouTube and say, Hey, Mike, you don't name anything. You need to name things. And that's true, but, you know, it's not all loss. You can come back and just start, go to your little uh, objects manager here and just click on these and start naming them. And I'll just call this my star. Now, I could turn this into a group as well, and I won't for now, but you, you could. All right. And then you can come up here and open up things and actually go down there and name your array. And I could call this cutter, for example, because I cut with that array. Cutter 3, I think it was the third thing I cut with. And I could keep going on and on. But also what you can do is you can still edit these things. So, for example, take a look right here. Uh, that's a little too wide, so I want to narrow that up a little bit. So let's go to the place where that is in the uh, our tree here. Let's open that up. That was in the next cut. And that was my cube there, and that was just a little too, I think, uh, big. So let's change its size a little bit. So I'll work with these parameters a little bit. Not the wrong way. Bring there. Now that's looking more like my star should look. Okay. So once again, you, it's not all lost. You can go in and continue to edit your star from this menu here and rename and uh, do a better job than I did as far as naming things are concerned. Now what I want to do is the coolest thing. I want to put the image onto this star. So let me say something. There's three ways basically to get images onto objects you create in Cinema 4D. You can actually uh, just create them yourself, make images, work in the material manager. You can actually use a UV map where actually you have to split your image and actually create kind of a map like you do with the uh, basically mannequins. Or you can do what I'm about to do now, which is very typical of what's done in SketchUp, where you throw images onto uh, walls and you adjust their position. This is the fastest way to actually do this work. So what's so important about this technique too as well is you may be machining something and as opposed to trying to come up with a real nice texture just take a really good photograph you can put that photograph onto your object and it'll look exactly like that object and isn't that cool so let's go ahead and do that the first thing I want to do is grab the image and just drag it into my materials manager so I'll bring this up so we can see the materials manager now it's already there but if it wasn't there I'd want to drag that image from my desktop so I could go find the image drag it and drop it into my materials editor and I'll just call that my material what I'm going to do is delete this so we can see the whole process. So let's just delete this image. Okay, nothing's there right now. I'm going to delete the plane. Nothing's there except my star. And I'll just drag that image over. And so the reason I'm doing this is just so you can see the entire process. So just grab the image and drop it right into Materials Manager. Hit yes. That means it's going to save it to the folder that you saved your shirkin in. And now it's actually there and you can play around with it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm simply just going to drag and drop this image from the material manager. You can double click on it and name it if you want. Uh, we'll just call it Shirkin Image. And just drag and drop it right on your material. And it looks terrible, but don't worry. There's some cool tricks I'm about to show you. Bring this down a little bit so we can take a look at the attribute manu manager. Now, if it's not showing, you want to make sure that you're in the textures and that your tab is enabled. Okay. The way to do that is basically just to click on the texture and then you get this menu here that you can go to tag. And in tag you're going to see there's something called UV mapping. What you want to do is change that to flat. So let's change it to flat. I'm going to bring this down so you can actually see all the menu items. Let's try that again. And change that to flat. Now it still doesn't look right because it's being tiled. <laughs> so get rid of your tile, take that away, and it still doesn't look right. But now I'm going to show you the coolest trick. Down here in a menu item is this wonderful little menu item right here. That's going to allow us to rotate and move our texture around. So go ahead and click on that. And let's move back so you can see what you get. And I got nothing. So I got nothing. Why? Because I want to make sure I click on my star in my objects menu. So many times I'll be working with something that doesn't quite work right. Make sure you've clicked on the right item that you're working with in the objects menu. So that's done. And now I can actually use this to move this around. So I can actually rotate this around. One of the problems right now is the image is not facing me. So let's kind of zoom in here so we can see what we're talking about. I've clicked this wonderful tool down here. I've made sure I've clicked what I'm working with in the material objects uh, menu. And now I'm clicked on rotation because I'm going to actually rotate this 90 degrees so you can actually see it. Doesn't quite look right. What's wrong? Okay, now let's work. There we go. Now we're rotating. Now we're cooking with gas. 
and so I rotated it into the plane so I can see it. There we go. Got to play with this, around with his thumb. Okay, I was rotating the wrong direction. That's what it was. I was actually rotating this direction. It wasn't help me, helping me any. So I tried to rotate the other direction, trying to rotate that right into the plane, okay? So rotate that right into the plane so you can see it. Okay, there you go. But it's too small, so let's expand it. So use a little expansion right there and just make it bigger. Oh now we're working with our image. I'm going to bring it right onto our image. There we go. It's not quite rotated into position, so once again, hit your rotation, and let's continue just working with this, and you're just going to work with this texture until you get it right on your image, okay? Things are not looking quite good, but we're going to get it there, don't worry. Okay, and now I want to, uh, I know that I've kind of messed with this a little bit, so let's make sure this rotation is looking good. That's good, let's rotate this a little bit. Let's translate our image just a little bit to get it right on the object. Okay, once again, need to shrink that a little bit. It's too big. And that's, you're going to just basically work with this image and get it just right. It just takes a little bit of, little bit of patience. Okay, going to shrink that just a little bit. Okay, you're going to move that around a little bit. Okay, now we're starting to look pretty good. Let's give it just a little bit more rotation. No, I think that's looking pretty good. All right. Yep. It's starting to look good. Okay, let's rotate that toward me, and now I'm going to render it and see what we got. Control R. Hoo -hoo -hoo -hoo! The really good feelings. Doesn't that look fantastic? Let's flip it over. Hey, it did it both sides in this particular instance. Sometimes you have to flip both sides. Wow, that is cool. I'm so proud of myself. Now, one of the problems here. <laughs> This is sticking out a little too far, so I'm going to go back into my objects menu and I'm going to shrink that overall cube and kind of clip off that a little bit. So let's go right here and go to my uh, objects cube real quick here. That's the original cube. Sorry, I got really excited there. I tickled myself just a little bit. Let's see if I can find my original cube. Uh, let's open up this boolean. We've got to get right down to the very base. That's the original cylinder. You see that's a little bit large, so I can actually still move that around even though I'm, I, I've already uh, done that. and see, I want to clip these edges a little bit. So I'm going to click on that, go to my coordinates, and see if I can actually shrink that a little bit, or just basically just shrink right here if I want to. So hit that cylinder, and I'm going to basically come in X. There we go. Let's go to, and then you do the same thing with the Z. There we go, I'm actually cutting that off. You can actually physically see that cut as you cut. So that is actually looking really, really good. Bring the other one down to 0.3, get it right, and make sure it's centered correct as well. And let's rotate around. Oh, doesn't that look fantastic? Hey, I bet you didn't think we we're going to create something that cool in this lesson, and we sure did. And you know what? That's the power of using the image of an object for its uh, texture. Woohoo! Man, I'm really proud of that. I'll have to sell that somewhere. Fantastic. I'll try to release this on my blog so you can actually download this, guys, and keep it. Just go to professionalpapervision.wordpress.com, and I'll have a download there so you can actually uh, uh, release that. So, hey, thanks for listening. Hey, isn't it cool when you put a, use a, a texture of an image on the image itself? Fantastic. Hey, thanks for listening. This is Mike Lively, and I'm sorry I tickled myself a little bit. Uh, see you next time.